just wanted to run through the telecommunications sector this morning. I've been rabbiting on for a little while about the National Broadband Network. We all know it's bad for margins in telco. Why it's uh, significant now, if you look at this chart, you can see as of December, 22% or nearly one in five households in Australia with an internet connection now has an NBN connection. So it's highly material. If you look forward uh, about two years, it's going to be more than half um, of Australian households having an NBN connection, which means it's very hard to ignore. So who's winning in the NBN race? This chart is the quarterly uh, NBN ads from the ACCC. They've been releasing that for a little while now. As you can see, the chart on the top is Telstra, and it might surprise you, but Telstra continues to add market share. They took 55% of the new customers in the December quarter. Interestingly, uh, you can see from there that TPG and Optus are generally losing market share, and Vocus or M2 has been gaining market share, but maybe dropped the ball a little bit in December. So what that's really telling us, Telstra is investing in the lifetime value of its customer. It knows that customer churn uh, is a challenge, and if it can keep the customer in the NBN environment, then it's most likely that customer will stick around for a while. So they're investing for the long term, taking the upfront cash from the National Broadband Network to retain that customer long term. TPG continues to sweat its assets. We know TPG is all about free cash flow, and they've got quite a high level of debt having um, acquired eye on it and also doing a couple of other things that have made its capex really high. So it's trying to maximise its free cash flow. And to do that, it needs to keep the customers on its infrastructure as long as it can. And that's why it's losing market share. Uh, and the others, you can really have a look at yourself. Optus is a little bit confused and Vocus is generally taking market share. So that's what's happening in the MBN. Uh, so if we move on to previews, to starting with Telstra, they report this Thursday. They've guided for the full year. In terms of half yearly numbers, we're looking for about 2.5% growth at the NPAT and EPS line. We expect the dividend to be flat at 15.5 cents for the interim and the final dividend to increase half a cent. Uh, so things to watch out for, their net debt has historically, or at least in the last 12 months, been at the lower end, but it should actually nudge up a little bit at this result as a result of higher capex, which they've guided to, uh, increasing from 15 to 18% of revenue, and also that buyback that uh, they cancelled or, or finalised, should I say, at the end of last year. Even though that's done, it won't really impact the share count in the first half, it'll have an impact in the second half. Just in terms of net ads, we think they'll slow but still be positive. Interesting to see that Optus's result, which was out last week, actually showed Optus on a more normalised basis, continuing to grow ab, um, market share in the in the postpaid, so expanding its market share there. Um, Vodafone, we haven't seen any numbers yet, but we know they're slowly um, getting their act together there. So we think that's going to be a bit challenging um, for Telstra. But in the fixed side of things, as you've seen, they're continuing to actually expand their market share. So in terms of uh, investment view, we do have a hold here. We're happy holding for the dividend, but if you're looking for capital growth, we think it's going to be a challenging environment for Telstra, but we do continue to highlight that the one-off payments from the NBN are going to help them uh, re replace the lost earnings from the NBN there. Uh, and in terms of risks, if we had to pick a direction of earnings risk at this result, we'd say it's probably to the downside in terms of earnings for Telstra. Uh, if you look at the number of one-offs that are likely to come through, we've had a bunch of regulatory changes last year that will impact this first half because they didn't exist this time a year ago. We've also got one-offs like restructuring charges, which they flagged, um, and Uyala uh, uh, impairment. And also interesting to see that News Corp impaired their Foxtel uh, stake when they released their result recently. So Foxtel is actually doing it relatively tough. So we think there's a few headwinds for Telstra, but we do still think that the dividend is pretty stable there. I'm just flicking on to our most and least preferred stocks. Our most preferred Speedcast, it's a high conviction stock we've been talking about for a couple of months now. Uh, they've guided to 40 mil pro forma EBITDA and they did that in November, so very unlikely to miss that number. In terms of the earnings risk, we think it's to the upside because they settled this large Harris Caprock acquisition a couple of months earlier. Given that acquisition doubled its earnings, having that for an extra two months is quite material to earnings, so we think that's got positive risk. Uh, we like it because of its um, cheap fundamentals, it's exposure to the oil and gas sector, it's exposure to the US dollar. So we think it's a really good story. Next DC, we think there's a good trade, uh, particularly in light of the news that's just come out, um, which Simon mentioned this morning about air trunk uh, raising funds. We think the market uh, gets a bit panicked about that, but we're not uh, worried about it at all. If you look, we wrote a research report in December last year saying these are not apples and apples. If customers are going to Airtrunk, it's not because NextDC has lost them, it's because they're very large 
customers that are wholesale only that Next DC was never going to uh, win those sort of contracts. So it's not a change of anything as far as we're concerned. So if the market panics a little bit on that, we see it as a buying opportunity and we expect Next DC to reiterate their guidance. And as you've seen from these growth stocks with high PEs, um, at the moment, companies that reiterate their guidance are uh, tending to actually perform pretty well just around that news flow. So we think that's a good trade. Uh, and finally, uh, Megaport, we saw they released their cash flow a little while ago. Um, everything's heading in the right direction there. And it's just one I think they're making very significant progress in terms of strategic partnerships. Um, perhaps the market was a little bit disappointed that you didn't see a big step up in ports uh, with digital realty starting to sell services late last year. But the reality is there was probably only a couple of weeks last year that they were selling. So we should start to see that come through, I think, in this quarter and the next. Um, so I think there's an opportunity there in Megaport. Least preferred, TPG, still a lot of challenges, high levels of debt, losing market share. We just think you don't need to be there. Focus is one that actually looks better value at these levels, but I do think there's a long risk of um, long list of risks that we need to get through in the next six months before it starts to look really interesting. Just worth pointing out, we've seen a board um, tussle in the last six months. Jeff Horth, the CEO, took the reins really at the start of this financial year, so hasn't had his feet under the desk for 12 months yet. I rate him very highly, but it does take time to bed these things down. Uh, they've got a new CFO that starts this month. Uh, they did actually lose their head of corporate sales. A guy called Matt Hollis resigned and he's actually joining next DC, uh, sorry, Superloop next month. So they've lost their head of sales, MBN market shares dwindling. And then finally, you've got some debt um, uh, levels likely to be a bit higher because they announced a submarine cable project that was outside of their guidance. Uh, and, and of course, the intangible balance, which I flagged before being um, substantially higher than the market cap. So I don't think there's a rush on that one. Um, and finally, just a noteworthy mention, Superloop, I know the network's got a lot of interest in that stock. We've seen uh, a lot of volatility at the moment in that name, and we really are continuing to focus on the rate of organic sales from this business. As you know, they've spent a considerable amount of money building the fibre networks in Singapore and Hong Kong, and they're fantastic networks. We think they're going to get great returns over the medium term on that. But in the short term, we just want to see what the rate of sales is uh, doing there to get a little bit more confidence uh, in that name. So look out for that one.